Welcome back everybody, I hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna to make a tiny little no filter desk aquarium for some beautiful shrimp. Let's get started. Okay, so today's video is actually sponsored by F-Zone. I've been working with F-Zone for a while now and they recently released their own line of aquariums. So what I have right here is the 20 centimeter cube of the Anata series. So these are made from optic white extra clear glass. The glass is cut in these 45 degree mirrored edges, which looks really, really cool. And they come supplied with this black format underneath, which I'm a big fan of as well. And they're available in a bunch of different sizes. This is the smallest one, the 20C. And I think the biggest one is 120P, so like a four foot tank. What's pretty cool as well is that every tank that they make um, requires a leak test. So they, they fill up with water for I think 72 hours just to check the silicone seals, make sure it's not leaking. So whenever you buy a tank, you're pretty much guaranteed that it's leak proof. So thank you Evzone for sponsoring today's video. If you are considering of buying some Evzone products, don't forget to use my discount code. I think it's MJ Amsterdam, it gives you 10% off and it's also like an easy way to support the channel. So yeah, nice little cube. I think it only holds about two gallons, so it's definitely too small for fish. We can keep some nice shrimp in here, maybe some snails as well. And I have a pretty cool idea for the layout, but we first need a light. Here we go, nice little light that I still had lying around and uh, I think it suits the cube well. So my idea for this layout is to basically copy or replicate one of my older layouts. I used to have a 20 liter cube with a lot of fish in it. Most. Some of my long term subscribers might still remember the layout. And I really enjoyed it. I kept it for a long time as well. Made quite a lot of videos about it. And I kind of want to bring it back. So the hardscape from that tank uh, consisted of like two pieces of wood, some lava rocks. It was actually quite simple, but all the hardscape was covered in fish and moss. And I've kept the two pieces of wood. I actually made a different layer with them as well. And I still have them. And I want to see if they fit in this, uh, in this little cube. Please excuse the dirty aquarium. I'm going to take this tank down very soon. But in here we have the two pieces of wood and some of the plants that I want to use for this layout. But as you can see, the two pieces of wood still have a lot of the fissidents attached to it. It doesn't really look like much right now, but that's because these two pieces have been in storage for a while. They haven't really seen much light. And, but I think once we give it some proper light, some proper fertilizer, we should be able to get them nice and vibrant green again. Okay, let's give this a try. This one is slightly bigger, so let's put this one in the left corner and this one in the right corner. That actually looks pretty good already. I really like that one on the left. It kind of fits perfectly there. This one is a bit too small, however, so I think we need to raise it a little bit, maybe with some rocks. I basically want to create a nice V in between the two pieces, you know, just like we have right now. So let me grab a couple of rocks. Here we go. I've got some nice black lava rocks. I'm a big fan of black lava rocks, and especially because it's going to be a no filter aquarium, uh, this will provide a good house for beneficial bacteria as well. So let's see if we can make a nice composition. Let's put in this lava rock. This one is going to prop up that smaller piece of wood. So just like, just like so. And then that second piece of wood has got like a little curve here. And this rock kind of fits perfectly in that, you know? So we're going to put that in. It's a little tricky working in this tight space, but it's a fun little challenge as well. And then we just fill it in with more lava rocks. This piece right here has some nice texture, so we can put it next to that one. Here we go. So it's always a bit tricky to show the entire process on camera because you're constantly making these small adjustments, but I think this is good. I like it. We have that V. We have a nice little barrier in front with the lava rocks. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go cosmetic sand or like a carpet in front. Yeah, I'm liking where this is going. I think next step will be to glue everything together because it's all a little bit wobbly, so I'm just gonna glue the piece of wood to the lava rocks, glue all the lava rocks together as well, so it's just one solid structure. And of course, as always, I'm gonna use my uh, cotton pad method. So I just have a little cotton pad. I take tiny pieces of it, squish it together, and then with the tweezers, I'm gonna wedge it in between the points that I wanna connect. Then I take the liquid super glue, so the Ciano Acrylate super glue, I'll saturate the cotton pad completely and then if necessary I will also sprinkle on a little bit of the baking soda. So super glue, cotton pad, baking soda and then there's going to be one solid structure. Ok 
Okay, that's all the hard cap glued together. So of course we now have some of these ugly white spots, um, but I can easily cover that up later with more moss or different plants. If it really bothers you, you can always take a little bit of Aquasol, crush that into powder and use that to cover up these white spots. I'm not bothered by it. So I think we should move on to the substrate next. First up, we have Rio Wetland Ionian Black. Sounds very fancy, but it's basically just crushed black lava rock. And I'm gonna add this in the back of the aquarium, behind a piece of wood, just a, just a small layer. But yeah, again, it's lava rock, so it's very porous, a good home for beneficial bacteria. And there should be a little bit of nutrients in here as well, but I'm gonna cover this with aquasol, and they, the aquasol will provide the majority of the nutrients. Okay, so we've got a nice layer of crushed black lava rock on the bottom. Now we can cover that with some soil. I've got some leftover tropical powder soil, so I'll use that. Here we go, that's our substrate layer done. It's looking good. I'm definitely gonna use some cosmetic sand in the foreground here. But I'll probably save that until the very last, until we're done with planting as well, because you can see right now we already have some... Uh, oh, hello there. So right now we already have a little bit, of, little bit of soil lying here, and after planting that's only going to get it worse. Are you going to help me uh, prepare these plants? As always, I've got a really nice selection of plants from Dedala. So we've got the uh, Eleocharis. I've got my favorite crypt, the Legroy. This one is really small, but really beautiful. I've got two pots of the Rotala Aetra. Got a tissue culture pot of Monte Carlo, as well as a pot of Bousse Vlandera Serenbu Brown. So I think that's it. Should be a nice, uh, a nice mix of plants. Okay, plants are prepared. Unfortunately, the Monte Carlo is not in a very good condition. I opened the pot and I immediately smelled it. It's my own fault. I, I received that pot like well over three weeks ago already. So. Should have known that it might not be in the best condition. I think I'm going to replace it with some moss actually. See in this little nano tank, over here in the front corner I have some moss. And it, it looks a little bit like Monte Carlo, right? It's also creeping, it's also growing a carpet, so I think I'm going to use that instead. Yeah, so we can use a little bit of this and kind of wedge it in between here in these cracks. That will also kind of stop the soil from rolling forward, so that's perfect. We can also use it to cover up these white patches. Okay, that's the moss done, so let's move on to the next plant. This is the Crypt Legroy. So this is going to be a nice transition from the moss. And then behind the Crypt I'm going to put some of the uh, dwarf hair grass. starting to look really good. We have the moss in, we have the bush flander in, and the crypt as well. Next I want to move on to the, uh, the hair grass, and I'm going to use this in each corner basically, so on the left side and on the right side as well. And then of course in the background the uh, Rotala Aetra. So this one is already quite long, so I'm just gonna snip off a few of those really long stems. You can actually replant those as well. But otherwise it's just gonna look a little bit silly. So that's good, so now it's a bit shorter, so we can actually split them up into nice portions and plant them. Okay, I think we're done with the planting. It's looking good. Of course, we still have a little bit of soil visible, but that's uh, totally fine. Once all the plants start growing, especially once the visitin starts taking off, they'll be, uh, they'll be invisible later. Next up is to fill up with water, and then I'm gonna siphon out all these um, soil particles here, and then we can fill in the decorative sand. And then we're really finished.
So it's now been exactly one month since I escaped this little cube and I'm really pleased with the end result. I've added five of these beautiful neo Caradina shrimp and they've been in here for about a week now. I've also added a few ramshorn snails. And before we wrap up this video, I just want to share a few tips on how to set up a successful no filter aquarium. Because two weeks ago, I posted a build video of my XXL no filter vase and I got quite a lot of questions from you guys. I think the most asked question was how do I cycle an aquarium without a filter? And to be honest with you, this is just the same as all my other tanks. I wait around 3 weeks, do regular water changes in between, and that's it. Lately I've also been adding some seacum stability, but this isn't necessary at all. Another question was if I use heaters. Well I currently only have 3 tanks with a heater, my beta tank, the big shallow, and the 70 liter scapers tank. So all the small tanks I just keep at room temperature, which is roughly 21 degrees celsius during the day. Then there were a few people saying that they tried a no filter aquarium as well, but they had issues where the water started to smell after a few days or weeks. So to keep the water clean and clear, I think there's three things that are important. The first one is regular water changes, especially in the first few weeks. The second one is a good substrate layer because we need loads of beneficial bacteria and they love living in the substrate. But only if there's plenty of oxygen, so you want a porous substrate. And the last one is lots and lots of plants. The plants are the only filter that you have, so you want lots of them and you want them to be healthy. The last question was where is the oxygen coming from? Again the answer is the plants. During the day when the light is on, the plants will produce oxygen, but at night the plants will actually take in oxygen as well. So the levels are constantly fluctuating. But I think that as long as you don't overstock a no filter aquarium, you will never have issues with low oxygen levels. So that's it guys, hope you enjoyed this one, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.